Well here we've got uh, 40 kilos of mercury just thought I'd photograph or video what it looks like which is quite weird and wonderful to put your hand into it really weird as you can see it's it's uh, marvellous qualities yes I know it's very toxic but I'm going to wash my hands very shortly after taking this video so there you go that's what 40 kilos of mercury looks like swishing around <laughs> marvellous stuff to play with Не вредно, все работает более
can of course test this by using some round magnets. So let's try putting it in here now. Okay, so it still spins like that. Let's flip one of these over. Try to center it. <laughs> you see it's not paddling forward, it's just kind of wandering around aimlessly. You can still see it spins quite quickly. It's because it is still able to push on the mercury. And this battery of course moves a lot less than the mercury does because the mercury is just so heavy. But holding it in place. It does still shoot it off. And actually let's try putting the battery down farther. Ah, see? Once it is submerged in the mercury, instead of shooting off to one side, the mercury actually is able to continue to rotate all the way around. For the final test, let's put this device down on some conductive aluminum foil and see if it moves. Nope. <laughs> So it really needs to be the uh, mobile mercury. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. And a pool of liquid mercury. Now watch what happens if I lower this down into the pool of mercury. And I'm going to hold on to it here. Just kind of touch it to the surface. Look at that. The mercury shoots off that way. <laughs> now watch what happens if I let this go. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? It's like a little uh, boat just motoring its way across the pool of mercury. <laughs> I love the sound it makes too. <laughs> and uh, if I take one of the magnets and flip it around, you'll see what happens. Now it just spins like this. How about that? I think we got this for making horseshoes and stuff back when we had horses. So let's set it in here and see if it floats. Okay. It doesn't seem to want to stay upright. Let's let it tip over. It is. It's floating. <laughs> Look at that. The iron anvil floats because mercury has a density nearly twice that of iron. In fact, uh, due to the density ratios, the iron actually floats better than wood does in water. That it can like get underneath of and cause to flush out. That's an interesting result. So I guess the question now becomes, could I actually clog a toilet with mercury? I have here a whole flask of mercury. Let's see what happens when I tip it in. There it is, I plugged the toilet with mercury. As you can see, some of the mercury is actually coming through. A little at a time there. So the weight of the water seems to have pushed the mercury out, but none of the water is actually making it through. So it appears that the mercury has stopped dripping out. Let's see how much is in here. It's probably 10, 15 pounds of mercury that made it through. All right. Now I've got these plungers here. Let's see if I could actually use a plunger to push the mercury through. Eh, it appears to sort of work. Let's actually try this other plunger and see if it does any better. Oh man, that's heavy. All right, so it appears like I can get most of the mercury to go through by using the plunger, but I cannot 
get it all to go through. So there's all the mercury. I've recovered it and I've removed most of the water from it. You can see there's still a little bit of water in there from the droplets floating on top of it, almost like oil floats on top of water. Which makes sense because mercury is 13 times heavier than water and it doesn't mix with it. And I've saved all the water that I was using over here. So now I'd love to flush this toilet using you know, mercury instead of water, but unfortunately it's going to require more than one flask of mercury, which means I'm going to have to go to the shed and lug down another one. Why did I do this so far from the shed? Whew. So there's another flask of mercury. And these things are heavy. There's 76 pounds of mercury inside of it, but the steel flask also weighs another 10, 15 pounds. So this is like 90 pounds here. So there's two flasks of mercury. Now I could probably lift it up to the toilet here. I am strong enough, but you know, I wouldn't want it to spill from this height. It'd probably splash all over the place. So here we go. Just gonna pour this in a cup at a time until I filled it up to the watermark. So there's actually a bit of a problem that's developed. You see, when I put the mercury in, it lifts this up and the mercury just goes straight to the toilet. See, like this? So, I actually thought this might happen, so I brought along a chunk of tungsten here that I'm going to use to weigh this down. See, tungsten is actually heavier than mercury, so hopefully the weight of the tungsten will hold that down long enough for the mercury to hold it down on its own. The tungsten bar seems to have done the trick. Well, you can see some of the mercury went down into the bowl, which I guess is good because water does that normally. But uh, unfortunately, it means I didn't have quite enough mercury to bring it all the way to the water line. Looks like I'm going to have to haul yet another flask of mercury down. So here's the last of flask number three going in. Fortunately, it looks like I built the toilet strong enough to hold the weight. I'm actually going to drop this piece of gold down into the mercury. You see, just like the lead bullet, gold is very dense and hard to move with water. In fact, it's twice as dense as lead is. In fact, if I put the lead bullet on top of the mercury, you can see that it floats, whereas the gold sank right through. Okay. We're ready. Oh, it's heavy. In fact, I can't get it to go up. I'm gonna have to pull with the string, I think. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna break something. <clears throat> it's not going. The weight of the mercury is holding it closed now. I have to think of something. Let's see, do I have any cuts on my hand? I think I'm good. Let's just reach in there and do it. Here it goes. Here it goes. That was violent. See how much this thing shook around? Oh my gosh. But it flushed through. <laughs> All right, let's rinse my hand off in the bucket here. Let's go turn off those cameras. So it looks like I actually did break that chain. You can see here, I must have pulled on it so hard that it opened the links and then it just kind of floated apart. Shows you how much pressure the mercury was pushing down on this with. I mean, the, the tungsten bar here only weighs two pounds. That wouldn't have done it. Uh, let's pull this out and see what we got in here. I see a lead bullet floating. If I can catch it, here we go. It's coated in mercury. Let's set that up there. Let's see if I can find that gold bar. See if it even pushed it through. Oh, there it is. Right there. There's the gold bar. 
So here's my gold bar. It appears that I've turned it into a silver bar. But that's an easy fix. All I gotta do is put it into a flask of nitric acid. Just like that. This video is not being sped up. That's happening in real time. Just that very thin coating of mercury gets eaten away with the nitric acid very quickly. Here we go. There's a gold bar. One of the boxes that is sitting on my desk was banned from the Soviet Union. It's a kind of box. It contains... Well, it's right away. Хайпанем немножечко. Немножко хайпанем. Это не тот прибор. Похожий. К сожалению, мне не удалось его найти. Как мне рассказали об этом приборе. Он похожий. Это был двигатель, который содержал ртуть. Можете себе представить? В якоре было частички ртути. Я не знаю, сколько там было ртути. Потому что это был засекреченный объект. Это все четыре прибора, в которых содержится ртуть, пары ртути. описание странных летательных аппаратов древности, напоминающих по своим техническим характеристикам современные НЛО. В этом индийском трактате было рассказано о виманах, которые летали на ртуть. Большая часть виманов, то есть космических кораблей древности, описанных в Виманике Шастра, летали на двигателях, в котором присутствовал ингредиент ртуть. Так что также очень часто ртуть использовали в качестве лекарства. Не только как в качестве использования в двигателях или в философском камне, но также в качестве лекарства в древние времена ртутью лечились. Так По кругу это килограмм, да? Раз кругу, Ой, да, по, по кругу, по кругу это я сейчас скажу даже больше. Пол кило, вот он килограмм. И килограмм еще умножить на 5, 5 кило по кругу. Ясно. Вот, ну вот это максимум сегодня хвали давай. Нормально. Нормально, ну хорошо. Знаете, Гироскоп переменного радиуса. Спартак Николаевич. Да. Тут надо понимать, что вот там такой же принцип. Особенно здесь. Бабай Михайлович, она покрашена на самом деле это.
Super Vortex. That's crazy.